Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Canon R5C. Um, I picked this camera up about two months ago. Um, I was looking for a secondary camera for my Canon C70. Um, and I really wanted a camera in Canon's ecosystem. I wanted the same color science. Um, so that whenever I put them side to side with my C70, I could literally copy and paste my settings and it would be the same. Um, what really caught my attention with this camera was one, it's hybrid, it's a hybrid camera. You can shoot stills with it. Um, it's got the same sensor as R5 um, and it shoots C-Log3. I'm a really big fan of that. Um, personally, I prefer C-Log2. Um, I'm not gonna lie, I never shoot C-Log3 on my Canon C70. But um, it's still a plus for me that the, this little bitty camera right here has C-Log3. Um, dynamic range is incredible with this thing. Um, obviously it does have some cons. Um, it doesn't have variable NDs. Um, it doesn't have XLR inputs. Um, but th that's honestly, that, that's fine with me. I can get by with that because when I was looking at this camera as well, I was looking for something smaller, more compact um, that I can use for social media. Um, a lot of clients will be like, hey, we need this video, but we also need stills. Um, I am a one band, one man team. Um, I usually don't bring an AC, a photographer. Um, I, I don't do that. I usually do it all on my own. So that was a big plus for me. Um, I have my C70 for video and I have this for stills. Um, now this thing is incredible with video too. I've put this side by side um, with the Canon C70 and I mean, it's, it, it's pretty close to it. And for its size, for how compact it is, um, that's a big plus for me. So this isn't an in-depth review of the Canon R5C. I'm really just sharing my personal experience with it. Um, so far, it's been, it's been great. I love that this camera, um, you can just drop in an SD card. It does take CFast. Um, I don't use CFast cards personally. I just use SD cards. Um, I use a bunch of V90 SD cards because that's what my C70 takes. Um, I love that about it. Um, the only, another con that I would say with this camera is the HDMI. It is micro HDMI. Isn't a huge deal. Um, I do wish they would just, they would have just put a full HDMI um, output. So who's this camera for? Um, I do think since this is a hybrid camera, um, if you're a one man team, um, kind of like me, um, you don't have a photographer, um, you're, you're, the, you're the videographer and you are the photographer, this would be the perfect camera for you. Um, it's got dual pixel autofocus. The autofocus is crazy on this thing. Um, I will say the autofocus on the R5C is better than the Canon C70. Um, the tracking is better. Um, it's, it's quicker to response. Um, I will say that, that over the, the C70 with the Canon R5C. Uh, this is a great camera. Um, if you're trying to, if you're looking into getting a Canon C70, but the budget just isn't there yet, I would go ahead and pull the trigger on the R5C. This is a great camera. Um, it will get you by, um, and the stills on it are, are crazy. Um, that's what I love about it. So on here, it does have a, it's got the off button, and then you can also put it to video, and then you can also put it to photo. Um, the response time, whenever you switch from photo to video is probably like a five second delay, I would say. Um, but honestly, it's not a huge uh, deal for me. Um, I will say one of the big um, pros that with this camera is that the layout is almost identical to the Canon C70. You have customizable buttons. Um, the, I mean, everything, even the, the menu system inside the camera is just like the Canon C70. Um, and I do love that. So yeah, um, this camera would be for the social media shooter. Um, somebody that isn't, is trying to, is at that entry level right now and is trying to take it up a notch um, to a more professional camera, more professional quality. Um, this is a great camera. Um, I think this camera can also really be for wedding shooters. Um, if you're a wedding photographer, or wedding videographer, um, I could see this for a wedding photographer. If you're trying to shoot BTS, um, video BTS, this would be the perfect camera because all you have to do is switch it to video mode 
and you're doing behind the scenes. Um, this can also be for strictly just a behind the scenes shooter. Um, if you're always doing behind the scenes, you offer your client, hey, I can do photo and video. This would be the perfect camera. So about two months ago, um, when the R5C was released, um, the Canon C70 came out with a software update. Um, so you can now report internally raw, uh, which is really cool. I don't really do it, uh, to be completely honest, but it's pretty cool to have that feature on the Canon R5C as well. Um, so this camera is full frame, another really cool thing. Um, and I really like that it's full frame because my Canon C70 is a crop sensor camera. Um, so when I have a 24 millimeter, it's not really 24, but when I have it on this, it gives me the true 24. So it's actually wide. Um, and there is a very big difference too. Um, I will say the R5C has more of depth of field, especially when you're at 1.4 at with the 24 prime. Um, so I, that is something that I will give the R5C super good. Um, this camera is 422 10-bit, which is crazy for a camera this size. So I want to show you guys some content um, that we were able to get with the Canon R5C. Um, last weekend, we actually got to shoot um, my buddy Joel's band um, called Sound Society. Um, really cool dudes over there. Um, this was really like a last minute shoot. They asked us, hey, can you come do some behind the scenes, um, some photos, and some video. So thankfully, I was able to take my fiance Nani. She was on my Canon C70, and I was on the R5C. Um, and I actually, for the first time, got to test out the AK on this. Um, I had to borrow a V-mount battery. Uh, but it was really, really cool, really interesting. Um, I think I was able to record like four minutes um, and it took up my whole 128 gigabyte SD card. Um, but it was super cool, super sharp images. I mean, you could crop into like his nose. Um, it was super sharp. Um, but what was really cool is that even on the 1080, um, I was able to crop in for their stories. If they wanted stories, I was able to crop in and it was really, really sharp, which is for me, it's good and it's bad. Um, sometimes it's a little too sharp for me. Um, I do like my images soft, uh, give it more of that cinematic look, especially with video. Um, but it does come in handy when you have to crop in for stories um, or just crop in in general. Um, but yeah, really, really cool shoot. Um, got to really test out this camera. Um, got creative with it. Here's some content that you can check out. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the channel. I will be making a lot more reviews. Um, I, would, I would like to do a lot more behind the scenes. Let me know if you want to see behind the scenes of uh, actual shoots, music videos. Um, but also, I, I really... I'm super interested in making not just in-depth reviews, but personal experience reviews. Um, what I've been with, or what I've been through with this camera, what I've taken it through. Um, my next review is probably gonna be on the Aperture Amaron. Um, I just bought a Aperture Amaron light. It's actually my key light right here. Super cool light, um, super affordable um, that it's coming from Aperture. It's one of their more affordable options. Um, it's a super versatile light. I'm not going to get too much into it. I'm going to save it for the next video, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it helped you out. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like. See you guys in the next one.